I could just minister on the importance of God's word forever. I've got, matter of fact, that's about what I do. (laughs) I've got dozens of series that just talk about how important God's word is. This is why the Bible college is so important. Most people don't get into the word on their own. And most, you know, it's, I've been studying the word day and night for 45 years. And there's no reason it has to take you 45 years. You can take advantage of people who have spent time in the Word and we can condense things and help you. And it's, man, it's just tremendous to sit and receive these things. Here's a second thing that really helps you to assure your heart and convince yourself of Christ in you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and let me start reading with um, verse 21. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ. Did I read that right? Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. What I'm wanting to focus on is this word earnest. The word earnest means a down payment or a guarantee. You know, when you buy a house, they want you to put earnest money down. What that means is you're guaranteeing that you're serious, that they're going to try and work this contract out. And if everything works, then this earnest money is your proof that you are serious. You will go through with the deal. So earnest is proof, a guarantee, a down payment of something. And it calls the Holy Spirit here the earnest. He has given us the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. The Holy Spirit is a proof to us that God is alive and that he is risen from the dead and that he does live on the inside of us. I'm running short of time here, so I'm just going to say some of these things. You have to go find this out on your own. But in John chapter 7 and John chapter 14, Jesus gave promises. He says that when I am risen from the dead... I will send the promise of the Father unto you, talking about the Holy Spirit, and he will come and dwell in you forever. And so when the Holy Spirit comes, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and have the ability to speak in tongues, you know what that is? That's an earnest. It's a proof that Jesus rose from the dead and came and lived in your heart. And one of the ways that you assure your heart before God is through this power of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. When you speak in tongues, you can't do that without the Holy Spirit. It is proof that Jesus did make it to the Father. He rose from the dead because he said he wouldn't send the Holy Spirit until he had risen from the dead and ascended unto the Father. So we, the Holy Spirit, the fact that I have the Holy Spirit with me and I can speak in tongues is proof to me every time I speak in tongues that Jesus made it. It's proof. It's evident. If I want to ensure my, to assure myself and convince myself, one of the things I do is start speaking in tongues because that man is the Holy Spirit. It's the earnest of my inheritance. Look in chapter five, second Corinthians chapter five, verse five. He's talking in these verses. He started in verse 18 of the previous chapter saying, we're looking at things that can't be seen. Most people think, man, that's weird. If you can't see it, how do you see it? You have to see it with your heart, with faith not just with your eyes. And then he starts talking about how that we have a glorified body waiting for us. And if this physical body dies, we have a spiritual body that has been guaranteed to us in heaven. And he's talking about these things that can't be proven in just the natural. You have to see it by faith. You have to walk by faith. And he said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. He says, Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God who hath also given unto us the earnest of the spirit. Here again, the Holy Spirit is an earnest, a down payment, a guarantee that these things are so. And so the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our life is absolutely essential for you to assure your hearts. The Holy Spirit is sent to edify you and bear witness. It says over in 1 John chapter 5, I believe it's verse 13, that we have the witness in ourself. And that's talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our hearts that we are the children of God. Romans chapter 8 
and just so many other places. Romans chapter five, verse five, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the spirit which is given unto us. I tell you, if you're going to assure your heart and if you're going to walk in faith instead of unbelief, you're going to have to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues, and then you're going to have to use it and build yourself up. In Jude chapter one, verse 20, it says, but you beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's talking about praying in tongues. When you pray in tongues, you build yourself up on your most holy faith. It's the highest level of faith that you can get to. Speaking in tongues is like turning a switch and it just turns on the power of God and it starts doing something to you. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, about verse 2 or 4, it says that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. The word edify means to build up, promote spiritual growth. You know, I really don't have any, uh, let's see, I need to use the right word. I have compassion for you, but I don't have pity for any person who has the Holy Spirit and yet is just down in the mouth and beat down and depressed and discouraged. I can have compassion for you, but I don't have pity because you've got everything that you need to be able to overcome. You just aren't using it. You need to start using the Holy Spirit. When you speak in tongues, you build yourself up on your most holy faith. If you come to me talking about how discouraged you are, and if you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, and if you hadn't spoken in tongues in months, well, shame on you. Turn over and let me give you a good swift kick in the rear. Why aren't you using what God gave you? Man, if you need to be encouraged, if you need the love of God shed abroad in our heart, if you need to be built up and promoted spiritually, go to speaking in tongues. And the Bible says that it'll cause you to dwell in your most holy faith. The next verse, this was Jude chapter one, verse 20. It says, you beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. The next verse, verse 21 says, keep yourself in the love of God. When you start praying in tongues, it keeps you in the love of God. It will cause the love of God to abound in your life. It's powerful. And, I, you know, many people to them, speaking in tongues is something that they do one time to prove that they receive the Holy Spirit. And then they may go years without ever speaking in tongues again. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than ye all. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And he was talking to a body of believers. That would be like me saying, I speak in tongues more than all of you put together. What a huge statement. And it just so happened that this guy kept himself in the love of God. He wrote half of the New Testament. He turned the world right side up. And this guy talked in tongues more than all of the Corinthians put together. There's got to be some relationship there. I'm telling you, speaking in tongues is awesome. It changes your life, but you've got to use it. It doesn't change your life if you don't use it. It's just like flipping a switch and turning on the power. But if you never flip the switch, it doesn't do anything. When you speak in tongues, your natural mind is going to say, this is silly. I don't know what I'm saying. This is gibberish. You know, one of the problems that I deal with when I pray for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they think, well, this doesn't sound like a real tongue. What does a real tongue sound like? <laughs> Jamie and I have been over in China and we heard those people and we thought, man, this makes my speaking in tongues sound really good. <laughs> man, Chinese doesn't sound like a language to me. Did you know that they actually, the Wycliffe translators have found a group of people that they whistle is how they talk. It's whistles and it's a tongue. It's a language. They've written it down. And they've translated the Bible into whistles. There's another language that's nothing but clicks of the tongue. Just clicks. That's how they talk. And it's a language. But see, people, ah, mine doesn't sound like a real tongue. It doesn't sound like I'm speaking in tongues to me. And you know what? Your mind, if you are controlled by the flesh, your mind will rebel when you go to speaking in tongues. You'll go to saying, this is silly. This is stupid. You need to quit this. Do something that you know what you're doing. For you to persist and pray in tongues, not just for one phrase, 
not just for one minute, but I'm talking about spending 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour speaking in tongues. For you to do something like that, you've got to move beyond the physical. You've got to move beyond doubt and unbelief and you have to get into faith. It makes you get into your most holy faith if you pray in tongues any length of time at all. And that's the reason it's so important. It makes you focus on spiritual things. It'll make you focus on God. It will build you up. It'll encourage you. The Holy Spirit is the earnest, the guarantee of these things. Look at Ephesians chapter one. Here's another time. It's talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 13, it says, in whom ye also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. We've all been purchased by the blood of Jesus, but right now we don't see the full manifestation of it. Your spirit is completely saved, but your body and soul are not completely saved. They aren't changed. This mortal has to put on immortality. This corruptible has to put on incorruption. Your body is mortal and it's going to be changed. Your mind and emotions are going to be changed. They aren't changed now, but your spirit is completely changed. And until your body and soul get changed, the Holy Spirit is the earnest, the guarantee, the proof that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. And when you go to yielding to the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues and building up yourself on your most holy faith, it just does world of damage to your doubt and unbelief. If you are full of doubt and unbelief the way most people are, you will either quit praying in tongues or you will have to get out of doubt and unbelief and get into faith to continue to pray in tongues. It does not satisfy your flesh. It is foolishness to your flesh. It's embarrassing to your flesh. After I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit for nearly two years, I was taught so much trash about it. I was taught that it was of the devil. That for nearly two years after I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues, every time I'd speak in tongues, I was embarrassed by myself. Nobody else was around. And I was embarrassed thinking this is silly. What am I doing? But I read in the Bible and I was just forcing myself to act on what God's word said. And I was going against my natural feelings. And you know what I was doing? I was assuring my heart. I was letting the Holy Spirit give me confidence and boldness and bear witness that I had been born again and that Jesus did make it to the Father because, man, here I am praying in tongues. And now I pray in tongues a lot and I, I've prayed in tongues a lot today. I pray in tongues and I assure my heart. I tell you, it makes you strong when you operate in the Holy Spirit. You need to be praying in tongues. I'm not asking you to raise your hand because many of you would be embarrassed. But there's many of you that have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit five years ago, ten years ago. And you don't ever use it. And yet you're discouraged. And you're struggling to believe. And you just can't understand what the problem is. I'm telling you, that's, I'm saying this in love, but brothers and sisters, that's lazy. It's slothful. You're going to have to be stronger than that. You're going to have to get violent. You're going to have to get to a place to where, man, this is what the Word says. These are the promises that God has given me, and I will not back off of it. And when your mind just keeps going the other direction because you've trained it that way, you are going to have to spend some time praying in tongues and renewing yourself and overcoming these things. There's one time I prayed in tongues 17 and a half hours without stopping. I've prayed in tongues three and four hours at a time because I had my mind just going one direction and saying, it's not working. You're going to die. Give it up. Quit. And I just said, I refuse to do this. And I would start praying in tongues and build myself up on my most holy faith. And I just refused to quit. And I prayed in tongues and did it. And I know that there's some people in here that have done this and you don't have to do things exactly the way I did. Maybe it's because I'm so full of unbelief and I just, I don't know what my problems are, but I'm telling you, I've had to, I've had to fight. I've had to take the word of God and I've had to assure my heart. It doesn't just come naturally. 
I have to stand against the doubt and the unbelief. We've all been baptized in unbelief and you are going to have to do something to counter it. The Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit are the two greatest weapons to assure your heart and to get the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And if you would do that, if we would start taking the scriptures, again, I'd like to encourage you, if you haven't heard that teaching on spirit, soul, and body, you need to get that. And you need to understand how Christ can dwell in you in the spirit realm. You need to get this acknowledgement, the understanding, and then you need to get the full assurance, which only comes through the word of God as an anchor of the soul and praying in tongues and building yourself up on your most holy faith. Man, what a tremendous weapon God has given us. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is powerful. This is why the, even the religious world has fought speaking in tongues so much because the devil knows how powerful it is. He will try and say it's one of the least gifts. Let's not talk about that. I tell you what, any gift that God gives you, even if it's the least, is worth fighting for. Man, speaking in tongues is powerful. If you don't speak in tongues, you're like charging hell with a water pistol. You're trying to do it in your own strength and in your own power. You need some power. Jesus said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Oh man, I got something really awesome I'd love to say right now and I'm out of time. Maybe, maybe tonight, maybe tonight I'll share this. If you could understand this, it would really, really bless you. But speaking in tongues is something that every person needs. Every person. Last night, I don't even know how many people we had come to. 70? We had 70 people come forward last night. Maybe half a dozen, five, six received salvation. And 70 people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Jesus. But again today, I know that there's people here that don't have this baptism of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you never really understood the purpose of it. And today you've understood a little bit more that, man, this is to encourage you and to give you proof, evidence, a down payment. And if you don't have this baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, I'd like to pray with you and help you to receive. There may be somebody here saying, well... I believe I've got the Holy Spirit, but I don't have to speak in tongues. You don't. You don't have to have the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues. I've got the Holy Spirit right now, and I'm not speaking in tongues. I'm speaking in a known language. You don't have to speak in tongues. You get to speak in tongues. It's a privilege. It's an honor. But you know what? The Lord won't make anybody. If you're just waiting on him to make you, I've had people say before, well, if God wants me to have it, I'll have it. That's like a person saying, well, if God wants me to be saved, I'll be saved. That's not how it works. You have to believe and receive or doubt and do without. It doesn't come to pass automatically. You have to reach out and take it. And so there may be all kinds of questions you have because this is taught against a lot. But I'm telling you that the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues has revolutionized my life. It's one of the ways that I have assured my heart and been able to overcome a tremendous amount of doubt and unbelief. And I'm just recommending it highly. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you don't speak in tongues, I'd like to pray for you and help you to receive. Is there anybody here who would raise your hand and say, that's me and I want to receive this baptism of the Holy Spirit. If that's you, just raise your hand right where you are. Praise God, we've still got hands all over. Even though we've had 70 people or more, we've still got people here this morning. You know, if you raised your hand or if you were supposed to raise your hand but didn't do it, would you just get up out of your seat and come forward and we want to pray with you right here and help you to receive. Thank you, Jesus. Come forward and stand right down here at the front. We're going to pray with you. anybody there who's saying, well, I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've spoken in tongues, but I find people that they struggle with it. They can't say more than just a word or two. It's not fluent. It's not like something that you can 
pray in tongues for a long period of time the way I've talked about. You need to come down here and let us pray with you and help get you free operating in this because you need to be able to speak in tongues fluently. Maybe there's somebody here who spoke in tongues 20 years ago and hadn't done it since. You need to come down here and restart this thing. It doesn't mean that you didn't receive it. if I go down there and I don't receive? Well, I can guarantee you if you don't come down here, you aren't going to receive. You got nothing to lose. I'm going to give you a free book. I'm going to give every person down here a free book. So you got nothing to lose. You got a lot to gain. There's no reason not to come. If you aren't speaking in tongues, if you don't have the ability to speak in tongues, you ought to come down here and let somebody help you to receive. Because I tell you, this is a powerful, powerful gift. Anybody else? You know, I still feel in my heart that there's some people that hadn't come forward. And I don't know what your reason is. You're afraid. We aren't going to do anything weird to you. We're just going to pray for you. I'm going to give you a free book. I had not got a church for you to join. You don't have to quit your church to come down here. This is a zero risk. If you don't speak in tongues, you ought to be down here. Somebody says, well, I've got questions. Well, I've got answers. But I'm not going to be able to talk to you personally. You come down here and let us pray for you, and we'll give you a book, and I guarantee you it'll help answer your questions. But if you don't speak in tongues, you ought to be down here. I tell you what, this is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's going to help you, not hurt you. Isn't this awesome? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You know, I gave the invitation for the baptism of the Holy Spirit in this gift of speaking in tongues. But Jesus said that he's the one who gave the Holy Spirit. So you have to receive Jesus, the giver, before you receive the gift. If there's anybody here who doesn't know Jesus personally, you need to first of all pray and make sure that you're truly born again. There's a lot of people who believe that there's a God. They may even believe that Jesus is the Son of God and they think, well, isn't that enough? The Bible says, no, the devils believe and tremble. You got to do more than the devil has done. He believes in God. He believes in Jesus, the Son of God. But he's never committed his life to him. You have to receive Jesus as your Lord. Is there anybody down here who's never done that? This isn't based on whether you're good or bad. It's not that your good outweighs your bad. It's all about, have you made Jesus your Lord? Have you truly committed your life to Him and said, I want you to control my life? This isn't a promise that you'll never make a mistake because you can't keep that promise. You will fall short, but you have to be willing to turn your life over and make Jesus your Lord. Let Him run and control your life. Is there anybody here who's never done that? If, you, if that's you, I need you to raise your hand. I need to pray with you because you can't receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit until you receive Jesus. Anybody? If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. There's somebody down here. Anybody else? Anybody else? Are all the rest of you born again? Do you know for sure if you were to die right this moment, you'd go to heaven and not to hell? If you're just saying, well, I hope I would, you need to pray and make sure. Because the Holy Spirit bears witness and convinces you that you are the child of God. Anybody else? 
All right, I'm going to pray with this man. I want everybody to pray this prayer with me so that he won't feel like we're just all listening to him. But brother, I'm going to say what you need to say. It's based on Romans 10, 9. And if you will pray this prayer and mean it from your heart, it's not magic. You got to believe it. But if you will believe what we're going to pray, I believe that right now you'll be changed. Jesus has already paid for your sins. It's just a matter of you receiving. You ready to do that? Amen. Let's everybody say this. Say, Father, I'm sorry for my sin. I believe Jesus died to forgive my sin. And I receive that forgiveness. Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life. I believe that you are alive. That you now live in me. I am forgiven. I am saved. Right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. You believe that, brother? Awesome. Welcome to the family. Praise God. Man, that's awesome. And the Bible says that when you make Jesus your Lord like that, you become the temple of the Holy Spirit. The reason that's significant, that means that God created you to be a dwelling place for His Holy Spirit. That's what He made you for. So there's no way that He would deny any one of you the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He created you to fill with His Holy Spirit. He wants this more than you want it. So don't wonder, will He do this for me? This is what you were made for. And there's a scripture that says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? All you've got to do is ask. All you've got to do is just open up the doors of your temple and welcome the Holy Spirit in. And I guarantee you, He will come in. So that's what we're going to do. Everybody up here now has professed Jesus as your Savior. And you are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I'm just going to lead you in a simple prayer where we open up our heart and welcome the Holy Spirit to come and fill us. And then I'm going to ask our prayer ministers to come up here. And these people are going to stand behind you and lay hands on you. Because in the Bible it says when they laid hands on people, the Holy Spirit was given. You can transfer the Holy Spirit from one person to another. So I'm going to lead you into prayer. These people are going to come behind and lay hands on you and release the power of the Holy Spirit into you. And after they lay their hands on you, I want you to quit asking to receive the Holy Spirit and take a step of faith and believe that He did what He promised He would do. And just start thanking Him that you now have the Holy Spirit. Don't go by your feelings. Go by what the Word says. Assure your heart and say, Father, your Word says you would give, so I believe. And I want you out of your own mouth, after they lay hands on you, to start thanking God and thanking Him that you are now filled with the Holy Spirit, that you do have this gift of speaking in tongues. I want you to start talking out loud. And then those of us who know how to pray in tongues, who've already received this, we're going to start praying in tongues because the Bible says, 1 Corinthians uh, 14, 17, that when you pray in tongues, you're giving thanks well. You're praising God in this heavenly language. So we're going to start praising God in this heavenly language, thanking Him for giving you the Holy Spirit. And when we start praying in tongues, I want you to join in with us and go to speaking in tongues. Isn't that awesome? Some of you are looking at me like, how do you do it? What do I do? I've got a book that's going to explain it, and it will answer your questions. But if you're ready, you can pray in tongues right now. The only instruction I'm going to give you before we pray is that most people think that the Holy Spirit's going to force you to pray in tongues. Like when you throw up, you can't stop it. Put your hand over your mouth and it just comes out. That's not the way that it works. It's like when I preach today, I believe that the Lord spoke through me, but he didn't take my mouth and make it talk. I spoke. It was me. That's the reason it came out in Texan. It was me that did the talking, but I believe the Holy Spirit inspired it. That's the way speaking in tongues is. It says in Acts 2, 4, they spoke with tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. The Holy Spirit inspires it, but you have to talk. You have to give voice. And so when we pray for you and they lay hands on you and then when we start speaking in tongues, 
you're going to have to start saying something. You can't talk in tongues with your mouth closed. You're going to have to say something. You're going to have to make sound. Don't worry about what it sounds like. Just put your mind on the Lord. If you don't know what to say, you can try and say what you hear the person behind you saying, but it'll come out different because that's their tongues. Every person's tongue will be unique to you. It won't be the same as anybody else's. So if you try and say what somebody else says and it comes out different, just keep talking. Amen. And you'll find out it'll be unique to you. Don't worry about what it sounds like. But this is what we're going to do. If you're ready, you can pray in tongues right now. Isn't that awesome? And then you'll have to continue doing this on your own. I want you to say this. The Bible says believers will speak with new tongues. I want you to say, I'm a believer. And I will speak in tongues. Father, I thank you for all of these people. Thank you for this brother who got born again today. We believe that all of his sins are forgiven. We believe all of our sins are forgiven. We believe that in the Spirit, we are a temple for the Holy Spirit. So right now, we open up the doors of our temple. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come into our lives right now. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill each one of us right now. That's our desire. We welcome you. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Now we... Communicating to God without the doubt. 
doubt and the unbelief of your mind. You're praying out of that new, born again spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me have your attention here for a minute. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but whether you spoke in tongues or not, I believe God gave you the Holy Spirit because He promised that He would. I believe you are now filled with the Holy Spirit. But you need to go ahead and speak in tongues if you didn't do it. When I first prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I didn't speak in tongues. It took me three and a half years before I spoke in tongues. But that's because I was a Baptist. And I had been taught that this was of the devil. And I had so much wrong teaching and fear. And it took me a while to get my mind renewed. But I kept studying the Word. And I've written all of these things in a book. And I've had thousands of people come forward like this and not speak in tongues immediately, but they just believe that they receive. When they get home, they study the scriptures, they find out exactly what speaking in tongues is about, and they go ahead and they start speaking in tongues later. So I would like to give every one of you a book. You need this to understand. This is more important than what you understand right now. I promise you that. This is the second most important experience beyond being born again. That's number one. Then getting filled with the Holy Spirit is the second most important thing that will ever happen to you. But you've got to understand it to get the full benefit of it. So if you would, we've got Mark right here that's got his Bible up in the air. And we've got that little room right there in the corner of this room that they've got books that we would like to ask you to go back there. They'll give you a book. If anybody has a question, they'll answer your questions. They'll pray with you. They'll help you anyway. We just want to make sure you get the maximum benefit of this. So if you would, just follow Mark right there. It'll only take a minute. And we would like to give you these books. session and they are here to pray with you and help you. I had some people come up to me today and talk about the miracles that they received last time. We've been seeing God change people's lives and these people are here to pray with you. So if you need prayer for anything, we welcome you to come forward. Let one of our prayer ministers agree with you and pray the prayer of faith and praise God. We're going to believe God for miracles. Also remember, if you are a minister and are interested in this continuing education, that uh, Van and Regina Smith are meeting in the Marigold Room A that's over here past registration. And we would love to share with you and help you. I believe it would really impact your life in a positive way. Remember that we have services tonight at 7 o'clock, then tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, and tomorrow night we start at 6 o'clock so that my staff can get through a little bit earlier on packing everything up. Amen. Also, CDs and DVDs of last night and this morning already duplicated DVDs and CDs back here in the back part of this room. So please go get those and uh, use it for yourself or to share with somebody else. The rest of you, I'm going to let you go. Uh, be back again tonight at 7 o'clock and we're here to pray with you. So if you need prayer for anything, please come and let someone pray with you and agree and help you to receive from the Lord. God bless you. We'll see you tonight.